Hello guys, welcome to another video for this CCMP security exam, which is the uh, SIMOS exam that I'm trying to take. So I have already configured um, IPsec with Ike version 1. So now what we're going to do is we are going to configure Ike version 2. Um, and let's go ahead and start. I already have a lab going on. So I have these two routers, which are going to be having the Arc version 2 configured between those two devices and Ike version 2 is a little bit different than not a lot different the configuration is a lot different between Ike version 1 and Ike version 2 um, in Ike version uh, 1 we do a lot less of configurations um, actually we, we do a lot more for Ike version 2 um, it's just that since I'm going to be using the default for some of the stuff, um, it's going to look like it's a lot less that we're going to be configuring. But on the back end, um, Ike version 2 is more smooth. Um, it works more smooth than Ike version 1 because Ike version 1 um, had to be, since it was an old protocol, they had to add new stuff to it like ISACAMP, IPsec, and a bunch of other stuff. But with Ike version 2, they all come together. Everything on the um, RFC, everything is together. Everything is implemented in Ike version 2. But in Ike version 1, they had to put more parts together because since it was an old, um, an old protocol, they had to come up with solutions for different um, problems that showed up during the time that Ike version 1 was um, was working. Right. So. Let's start, stop talking and let's start configuring um, Ike version version 2. Um, so for Ike version 2, we need to configure a, let me see, uh, we need to configure a Ike version 2 policy, which I'm not going to configure one, I'm going to use a default one. Um, a proposal, we need to do a proposal, but we're also going to be using the default proposal. And inside the policy we need to attach that proposal so let's take a look at the default that i'm going to be using so we can do a show crypto ike version 2 policy as you can see right here that um, the router comes with one by default and it's called the default so this is the one that i'm going to be using the default proposal the default policy and as you can see the policy has attached the proposal already which is a default proposal so if you want to take a look at that proposal, um, this is the default proposal that we're going to be using. So we are going to be using this default proposal, which is called default, and it's already attached to the policy because whenever you, if you create a policy, let's say like policy um, asker, and then you created a proposal asker, then this proposal, you had to attach it um, to the policy. As you can see right here, since these two are the default, they are attached uh, since the policy since this i'm sorry since these two um, protocols are there by default they are already attached to the policy right um and you also need to configure a ike version 2 keyring i'm going to be configuring that and then you configure a ike version 2 profile and in that profile you attach that keyring i'm going to show you how to do that guys and then um before and then after that, we need to configure the IPsec profile, but we are going to be using the default profile. We are, we are just going to be, if we do a show, crypto IPsec, it's the IPsec profile. As you can see, there is a default profile that we're going to be using. And since I'm going to configure the keyring and I'm going to attach the keyring to the Ike version 2 profile, and then after that, since I'm going to be using the default IPsec profile, I have to attach the um, Ike version 2 profile into the IPsec profile. And then the IPsec profile is going to be attached into the into the GRE tunnel uh, for it to work. So let's go ahead and um, start with this configuration. Um, so first, let's see if we have connectivity. So let's do ping. Uh, we need to do ping 20.1.1.2. See if we have connection between R1 and R2. We do. 
and then I want to ping this device right here just to make sure that we have connectivity and we do let's go ahead to router 2 and I just want to ping this computer over here see if we have connectivity and we do um, since I already pinged this too and I know that we have connectivity there that's good so since we're going to be using the default Ike version 2 policy and the default Ike version 2 proposal we are not going to configure that we are going to jump straight up to the Ike version 2 key ring so let's go ahead and do that configure that you need to do a crypto Ike version 2 um, key ring and we are going to give it a name of Ike version 2 key ring and I also I'm going to I'm going to copy and paste all the commands so when we are done with these commands we are just going to paste that into water 2 because it's going to be um, the same um, configuration so let's go ahead and copy this enter so inside this key ring what we need to define is the peer which is going to be router 2 right since we are in router 1 we need to define the peer which is router 2 and in this peer we need to what we need to do is we need to specify the address of the peer which is 20.1.1.2 um, and since this one is going to be on the other side, this one is going to be router 1, right? And the peer is going to be 20.1.1.1 because this is for router 2 configuration. Um, and then after that, we need to configure a local pre-share key. So pre-share key local, we're going to call it router, router 1 key. Um, oops, let me go back like this router one key and this is telling that the um, pressure key that we're going to be using for this local device only is going to be called R1 right so the local for the other router is going to be R2 and it's the one that we're going to match it right here pressure key remote R2 key and for Ike version 2 that's one of the difference between Ike version 2 and Ike version 1 that in Ike version 2 um, you are able to use a asymmetric keys, which means that we are using two different keys for the two devices. So on this device, we are using R2, right? And on this device, we're using R1. We just need to tell R2 that the remote key is going to be R1, just like I'm telling on router 1 that the remote key is R2 for this one, and the local key is going to be R1, right? Okay, so we are done with that configuration exit exit now we need to go ahead and configure the um, Ike version 2 profile so we're going to do another crypto Ike version 2 uh, profile and we're going to call this Ike v2 underscore profile and in this profile we need to add some commands the first one is that we, we need to tell her that we are going to be using authentication that we're going to be using for the local is going to be a pressure key Oop, actually it's, it's just pre-share right and the authentication for the remote is also going to be pre-share I'm just telling you that we're not going to be using um, let me go ahead uh, I'm just telling it that we are actually not using um, what is it called? We're not using a a signature, a, digit, a digital signature or certificate that we're not going to be using a certificate that we actually do an authentication with um, pre-share key. So that's why I'm putting it here right here. I'm putting it that the local is going to be using the pre-share key that it was already defined in the key ring. Okay. And also the remote is going to be using a pre-share key that is already attached to the key ring. And after we do that, we need to go ahead and attach the key ring that we configure over here. And this key ring um, is going to be called, we're going to call the key ring local, paste, and we just paste the name 
we just copy and paste the name of the key ring that we configured, which was this one. There you go. So then after that is done, we need to configure some identity. So we need to match the identity of the remote. And it's going to be an address of 20.1.1.2. And then we are going to have the identity of the local device. Um, which is going to be the address of 20.1.1.1. And we're just going to put the addresses of those two devices. But for about a two right here, it's going to be the remote 21, 20.1.1.1, which is this one. And then the local, the identity local is going to be 20.1.1.2, just going to be the opposite, right? There it is. So after that is done, we have done, or we have completed the um, Ike version 2 profile configuration. So after that is done, we have to, let's do a do show. Well, actually, we're not going to do do show crypto. We know the, that the IPsec profile that we're going to be using is going to be the default profile. So all we need to do is go into the default profile that has already been configured. And we need to go into crypto, IPsec, profile, the name is the default. And we're going to set over here the Ike version 2 profile. And the Ike version 2, we need to attach the Ike version 2 profile name that we configured, which was Ike version 2 profile right here. Paste it. Done. So let's go ahead and do, since we're going to be using the default on router 2 as well, we can go ahead and do that. There it is. We're using the default IPsec profile. And then we just attach the Ike version 2 profile which has the key ring attached to it and also tells it the identity and the authentication method that we're going to be using right and also since it has the key ring attached to it we know the keys for our for the local and also for the remote site right uh, so after that is done what we need to do is we need to go go ahead and configure the URE tunnel and to do that, you go into interface tunnel 18. We're going to give it a source, or actually not source, tunnel source. And the source is going to be this interface right here for router one, gigabyte zero zero. Tono destination, it's going to be 20.1.1.2. Okay, so we can just go ahead and Copy this right here, and we are just going to give it a interface tonal. We're going to use tonal 20. We're going to use this. I always forget that it is tonal source of gigabit 00, zero. destination 20.1.1. There we go. Um, and then after we do that, we need to give it a tonal mode. Uh, the tonal mode. That needs to be for here is IPsec with IPv4. And I'm just telling it that we are going to drop that 4 byte or that GRE. And we are going to be using SVTI. And after we do that, we need to also go ahead and attach the tonal protection, which is going to be attaching the tonal, uh, which is going to be the IPsec profile, which it, we use the default profile, right? There it is. And we attach the default profile since it's the one that we are using because that's this is where we attach. Um, if we go up right here, um, the default, the IPsec profile is where we attach the Ike version 2 profile, which has all these information that we need. And you can see the ISA camp went from on, from off to on. Okay. And let's go ahead and paste that right here. Tonal protection, IPsec profile, default, that's good. Um, and then after we do that, we need to go ahead and configure your URP. Um, so router, your URP, let's say 100, network. So we need to add a couple networks. The, ooh, hmm, I forgot to do something. So before I do that, let's go ahead and do tonal, interface tonal 18. And we need to give it an IP address for that tonal. 
which is going to be 50, that one, that one, that one. There it is. So now let's go ahead into EIGRP, router 100, the network that we need to add. First one is going to be the IP address of that tunnel interface, which is 50.1.1.0. Well, actually, not like that. Let's go ahead and do no. And then we can do 255.255.255.0. Actually, I negated that. There we go. Let's do no, no outer summary. And then let's add the other network for router one, which is 182.168.1.1. That one, that one. Or that one, that zero. 255.255.255.0. Good. So now let's go ahead and add it right here. So router EIGRP, EIGRP 100 needs to match. No auto summary. The network for this one is going to be 50, that one, that one, that zero. Because we're going to configure the tunnel interface for this one is going to be 50, that one, that one, that two, right? And then the other network that we need to add is 10, that 10, that 10, that zero which is going to be this interface right here. Okay, hopefully you guys understand everything I'm doing. So now let's go ahead into router two. Since I copy and paste all the commands, I'm going to copy and paste one by one. Config T, so the first one that we're going to be using is the Qrain configuration. Exit and exit. After that is done, we are going to go ahead and copy and paste the profile. We are doing it section by section, just in case we get a um, error. And so far, so good. Now let's go into the Ike or into the IPsec profile. Done. And then we need to go into the tunnel. And before we do that, let's go ahead and add the IP address of 50.1.1.2.0. That is good. Copy. Paste it. And then the last one is the EIGRP. And after we do this one, we should have a um, a neighbor relationship with EIGRP. There we go. It's working. If you can do a show IP EIGRP neighbors, we can see that Tono 20 has a neighbor relationship with 50.1.1.1, which is router one. Okay, so that's good. So now let's go ahead and show you some commands that you can run. Um, the first one that I want to show you are the, if you want to see the key ring, you can do a show run section um, I version 2 key ring. You can see the key ring configuration. There it is. Pair 1, you can make sure that everything is good. So far, so good. Um, and then after that, you can do a show Ike version show crypto Ike version 2 profile show crypto Ike version 2 profile you can see the profile right here which has the um, key ring attached to it um, you can see the local identity um, or that's the remote oh this is this router to yeah so this is the local identity you can see the remote identity right here. You can see that DVD is disabled because I did not enable that. So that is good. Also, what you could do, you can go ahead and take a look at the IPsec profile. And here it is. We are using the default IPsec profile, and we just attached the Ike version 2 um, profile to it, which was this one right here. And you could also Go ahead and take a look at the Ike version 2 proposal that we're using. Ike version 2 proposal. We're using the default. We can also take a look at the policy, which has this default proposal attached to it. There it is. Um, what else can we see? I think that's, that's all we have configured. So that's good. Now, if you want to go ahead and take a look at the Ike version 2 um, 
the way that you can do that is by doing a show crypto i correction to essay you can take a look at the essay and what they are using to encrypt um, to encrypt we are using aes cbc um, for the hashing we are using sha 512 the Fulham group policy is five and we're using a pretty sure key to authenticate and you can do if you want to take a look at the IPsec SA as well, there it is. You can see that packets are already being encapsulated and decapsulated. So if you ping 192.168.1.2 from router 2 to this one right here, and we're going to repeat 100 times. There we go. And if we do show, um, if we do a show crypto IPsec SA, you can see that the traffic from R2 to this one right here is being encrypted because it increased the encapsulation packets to 150 and the decapsulation to 151. And if you do it again, it should encrypt it by 100 again. And there it is. And 245 and 245. It went up because we are using ERGRP. And ERGRP sends the um, updates. Uh, I don't know how. I think it's like every 10 seconds and that's why we we keep getting more and more packets because of EIGRP running and you can also do it from router 1 if you want to as well and let's show show crypto IPsec SA there we go and if you want to ping 10.10.10.2 we're going to repeat it a hundred times There we go and show crypto happy second say again you can see that now we have 365 and if you go on this side you should have also increased as well that we have 366 um, so as you can see it is being encrypted and if you want to do a debug command you can do a debug um, crypto packet it's a crypto packet or crypto engine packet um, and if we ping anything, let's see that we're going to ping 192.168.1.2. You can see that that packet that was sent is being encrypted because you can see right here it is giving me some stuff that I cannot read. And this is what it's going to show on Wireshark as well. Um, so if you run Wireshark on this wire, you won't be able to sniff the traffic because the traffic is being encrypted we are for data confidentiality it is also um, being hashed with SHA and it's also running some anti-replay protection so people cannot um, sniff the traffic and I just turn off all the debugging by doing it on all and I believe this is it for this video guys um, I hope you guys enjoy this video I'm going to, I might move on into the, the, M, let me see, the, the MVPN, um, so I could start doing some help and spoke and spoke to spoke on both IPv4 and IPv6. I'm also going to go back and configure IP version 1 and IP version 2 with both IPv4 and then IPv6 um, while I'm trying to learn this DMVPN. Um, and then after that, we're just going to go ahead and implement FlexVPN. And FlexVPN is the same as um, Ike version 2. FlexVPN is just a cute name that Cisco came out with um, for just for commercial purposes. Because it sounds better than Ike version 2, right? They were just trying to sell a product and they did it well by just calling it FlexVPN. So this is it for this video, guys. Now, now it is. I'm done with this video. And if you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you just go ahead and follow me on Twitter at TCNA Daily Tips. And if you do not have a Twitter account, I know you have an email account. Go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.